The word atom means indivisible. Now we know there are things inside an atom, but atomic models have evolved over the years. From the very first idea that the atom was the smallest thing to indivisible, to the discovery of protons, neutrons and electrons, and some of the way quantum mechanics is taking us today. So this video is gonna walk you through all of the different stages of the model of the atom. When atoms were first discovered in ancient Greece, they were named because they were thought to be the smallest thing that existed. Atom literally means uncuttable. In the 1800s, Dalton was working on a model of the atom, but he thought it was a solid sphere, solid and the same the whole way through. In 1897, J.J. Thompson developed the model further. He described negative, what he called corpuscles, and we now call electrons, in a sphere of positive charge. This is also known as the plum pudding model. In 1909, Hans Geiger and Ernst Marsden were working in a lab with Rutherford. And you may think it's slightly unfair that um, Geiger and Marsden did most of the work, but Rutherford's known for it. But I'm afraid things work out sometimes like that. And they did the gold foil experiment. In the gold foil experiment, they had a very thin sheet of gold foil and an alpha particle gun. Now, alpha particles, you have to remember, are helium nuclei, so they have two protons and two neutrons, no electrons, so they're going to have an overall positive charge. And if everything coming out of here has an overall positive charge, and Thompson's model was correct, where there is um, a solid sphere of positiveness with negative bits dotted randomly all around, you would expect every single alpha particle to behave the same same but that is not what happened the majority of alpha particles went straight through and this was highly unusual this is not what they expected and then occasionally very very occasionally some of them would get slightly deflected and then even more occasionally some of them would get massively deflected and basically come back um, to where they started. So this suggested to Geiger, Marsden and Rutherford that there was something different going on in the atom to what Thompson had suggested. They developed a model of the atom where the positive bit was in the centre and the electrons, the negative parts, were scattered all around the outside. This would fit really well with the experimental data because the positive alpha particles would be able to go straight through the majority of time. Occasionally, when they hit the nucleus or got close to the nucleus, they would be deflected. But if the majority of space within an atom was taken up by electrons or empty space, then the alpha particles would be able to go straight through. A few things to add on to our timeline. Mosley discovered that the charge in the nucleus went up by one each time when you're going through the periodic table. And Rutherford identified the positively charged bit as protons. Now these two things explain the change in um, charge as you went down across the periodic table, but not the change in mass. The change in mass wasn't explained until Chadwick discovered the neutron. Niels Bohr also worked with Rutherford in Manchester and he defined where the electrons actually were. He put the electrons into energy levels or shells and these shells had some rules attached to them. His rules were that electrons are in fixed orbitals, they are not in between these orbitals. Each shell or energy level has a fixed energy associated with it. That when electrons move between shells, radiation is either absorbed or emitted, and this radiation has a fixed energy. And this data fitted in, or still fits in, really well with evidence that we have from stars. When electrons move down at energy level, they emit radiation. And when they move up energy levels, it is because they have absorbed radiation. One of the problems with this model, or drawing it like this, is that actual atoms are 3D and not 2D. This leads us towards Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which states that for an electron you can either know the location or the momentum of the electron, but never both. In reality, what this means is that for an electron we can only ever 
guess what the probability of the location is. Now, the majority of the time, they're going to stay within a defined area. And this area is a sphere, not a... Um, uh, a 2D circle. So I know I'm drawing it in 2D here rather messily, but please try and keep in your head that it is a fixed 2D circle. And every so often you are going to get electrons randomly appearing in different places. And this is every so often and it is randomly. But the shells that we draw are just the most likely positioning for the electrons at any given point in time, not their actual location. For each of these models that I have gone through here, they were at the time the best model, the best fit given the current evidence. Now we can use the nuclear model um, at the moment because that is the best fit given the current evidence. The future is quantum physics, taking the nuclear model of atom and breaking it down into even smaller, smaller parts. And this is one of the things that I love about chemistry and physics is this overlap here. So we can take down our protons, our neutrons, electrons, break them up into quarks, gluons and leptons and do fantastic things with them. Um, um, so that is a very quick history of the atom and it is just the history because there is so much yet to be discovered. This is a beautiful 3D representation of one of the electrons in a 3D orbital and each dot that you can see on here is the probability of finding the electron in that location. So you'll notice there are electrons that go all the way up to the edge but the majority of them are clustered in the middle. Now here it looks like it should be um, a sphere shape, but when we come down to the side, you'll notice it's actually very, very different. This is quite a beautiful view that you get from here. Now if we turn this round, you can start to see how this has got a dumbbell shape in there as well. But you don't necessarily get that from the top. Now, each of these little dots, as I said, are the pro represent the different probabilities of where that electron is going to be at any point in time, because we don't know and they don't stay still.